What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Thursday, April 11th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, big oil and gas firms deepen investments in carbon capture. Next up, BRICS helping Russia bypass Western sanctions. This is according to their foreign minister on his recent trip to China. Lots of good nuggets in there. I will then quickly cover what's going on in the oil and gas markets. We did see oil prices settle slightly higher after some interesting Israeli moves over there. And then we will also take a glimpse at what the EIA put out today. Newsflash, it's a build, as the API said, but a little bit bigger than expected. And then we will let you guys get out of here and get your day. Um, Stu is still out on assignment, so I'm rocking a solo show today. So let's just go ahead and dive on in. First up, big oil and gas firms deep in investment in carbon capture. Um, you know, this is a really interesting. I love the first line of the article here. Carbon capture companies find themselves in an odd position. You know, obviously everyone thinks they're here to, you know, they're the ones and, and taking the brunt of this climate change debacle that's going on. But ironically, they're also the people that are on the forefront of this new carbon capture futures market. You know, in, in an inch, you know, this this article, you know, kind of basically says that that tension is now I'm going to read straight from the article on full display in the recent acquisition of funding was earlier this month, the carbon capture um, startup Ion Clean Energy raised forty five million dollars in Series A funding round led by Chevron. Ion says its ICE 31 liquid ambient solvent stays intact longer and captures more carbon dioxide from the common emission streams um, than conventional options can. Chevron says it plans to integrate ICE 31 into its growing carbon capture and storage, otherwise known as CCS. Um, in 2023, we all remember that they bought 50% stake in the Bayou Bend, which is a large carbon capture storage facility in Houston and invested in the carbon capture tech from Carbon Clean Solutions and another one, Savant. Um, Schlumberger is also getting in on the um, aquas on it. You know, earlier this year, um, they bought an 80% stake in the CCS tech provider, Akron Carbon Capture. That was worth about $400 million. In March, Total went ahead and dove in um, and bought Talos Low Carbon Solutions for about $150 million. Um, that the main asset in that deal in to, to, Total's low carbon solutions is a 25% stake in that famed Bayou Bend. Equinar also owns another 25% of the project. You know, it's pretty crazy. And I think the other interesting thing that this article points out is that this, while it looks like it's accelerating, it's not actually entirely new. BP is an investor in CO2 mineral startups for over 10 years. You know, U.S. Steel has, as you know, or they've signed a deal with U.S. Steel to start carbon capture. You know, th this is a, a trend that has been going on for a while, but recently has ramped up quickly. And I think it shows the dichotomy of, you know, diversifying your asset base. If you're ExxonMobil right now, or you're Chevron, you're one of these large oil and, you know, you know, international IOCs, um, you're, you've got excess profits right now with $85 oil. It does probably behoove you to go ahead and say, okay, let's maybe dive in and look at what, at some of these alternative sources, because, you know, there's tax deductions around it. We know there's funding available from the government, you're going to get great tax benefits because of it, but also it, it may diversify you and a little venture money never hurt anybody because if it does take off, great, you're in an exact position um, to capture. So very interesting, big oil and gas friends deepening their investment in carbon capture. Let's move to the next one. BRICS helping Russia bypass Western sanctions. That's according to their foreign minister. Um, he was in China recently talking at the um, um, he's on a two day visit to China. Um, but he basically in this visit, he has some great quotes. Um, my colleague spoke in detail about specific economic gaps that will emerge as a result of the illegal policy of unilateral sanctions, which will solve within the framework of BRICS and WIN and within the SCO. The SCO is the Shanghai Cooperating Organization. And so basically what this article is getting at is the fact that because of the sanctions put on the United States and the fact that Russia has been able to ha has been forced to force and make these new alliances and and, and expand and, and make and do deals with BRICS, do deals with China to work outside of the sanctions. What it's done is it's 
pushed the rest of the rest of those entities to a point where well, maybe we don't need to rely on the United States specifically for oil trade. Maybe we don't need to use the petrodollar. Maybe we need to start transacting in other currencies. And Stu has been on this. And I and I bring this up in honor of Stu not being here because he would be all over this because this is a clear signal that the petrodollar is continuing to be undermined and it could, and, and, and if we start seeing massive trade and if Russia is able to prove the model of being one of the largest oil players in the game, being able to bypass the American system, it does not look well. Um, you know, he also, you know, there was a bunch of other good nuggets in here, but it, it really, it, it it's really interesting what they're doing and, and when, the, and where this petrodollar might go. Let's jump over to finance quickly, but before we do that, guys, we'll go ahead and pay the bills here. As always, check us out, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. We appreciate everybody um, who's reach, reaching out. Um, Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything we need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Um, you can also hit the description below, see all of the links to the articles, timestamps, everything you need um, to jump around and interact with the show as necessary. Check us out, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for your data energy news combo. Um, as always, guys, www.energynewsbeat.com. Uh, overall markets, you know, a little spicy for the day. Nest S&P 500 drops about a full percentage point. NASDAQ a little less, about eight tenths of a percentage point. Uh, we saw... Uh, Two-year yields drop about a, um, about an eight tenths of a percentage point. Um, Ten-year yields up about 0.04 percentage points. Dollar index actually up one percentage points, which is interesting because we saw crude oil um, up 1.5 percentage points, 86.21. We also saw Bitcoin up about eight tenths of a percentage point, 69,000. But to get back to crude oil, 86.21 current trading price here at about 4.30 um, here on the 10th. Um, natural gas currently sitting at a dollar eighty eight. Uh, Brent oil up above ninety at ninety sixty nine. You know we we had a really interesting rollout. Um, you know development. So part of what you're, you're you know early on in the trading session on the tenth we saw prices drop. That was due to um, what the what we'll cover in a bit, which was what the the fallout from the EIA. But then we see in the afternoon there was an Israeli air strike in Gaza that basically hasn't fed and basically is unfortunately bopping the narrative that these peace talks are going well. So if these ceasefire talks stall, obviously that's a big buoy to prices. So again, you can really see how this ceasefire, what the reaction is to prices. You know, speaking of what happened early on in the trading session with the EIA, we saw them drop their strategic petroleum reserve crude oil inventory numbers. We can go and pull that um, image up here. 5.8 million barrel bill. That's a little bit more than what the API was recommending yesterday. Um, we also did see uh, about uh, point, about 600,000 barrel bill in the strategic petroleum reserve. We also saw um, a drop in fuel ethane. Uh, distillate fuel oil was up about 1.7 million barrels. Um, and we also saw total stocks, um, excluding the SPR, were up 12.4 million. So all around a little bearish on the EIA side, but mainly, again, what, what happened with the with the ceasefire talks, that seems to be um, trending what's going on with prices. I didn't really see anything else in the markets. We did see Diamondback um, offer up some senior notes for about $5.5 billion and some really great interest rate prices, 5.75 and 5.4 and 5.2. But they're getting good, getting decent uh um, interest rates on that uh, uh, relative to, I think, what most of the markets being able to, to sell them for. So no, good for them um, getting that Interplus deal locked up. But we'll go ahead and let you guys get out of here, get back to work. Appreciate everybody checking us out, www.energynewsweek.com. We will, uh, on Friday, you're going to hear something from us. I don't actually know what's up on the schedule here. I'll have to pull it up. Um, but on Saturday, you will hear the weekly recap, and then we'll be back in the chair Monday, bringing you all energy news. Um, we'll let you guys get out of here. Uh, we'll see you on Saturday and then we'll see you next week. Bye.